On February 28, 1953, two scientists at the University of Cambridge's Cavendish Laboratory found the secret of life. Francis Crick and his young American assistant, James Watson, discovered the structure of DNA. And for that, they would go on to win the Nobel Prize. But they couldn't have done it without help. That help came from Rosalind Franklin, a 32-year-old physical chemist who was little known outside of scientific circles. But here's the thing, it was her research that pointed Watson and Crick in the right direction. Watson had glimpsed one of Franklin's X-ray photographs of DNA, which provided the pivotal clue that helped determine DNA's double helix structure, the twisted ladder that gave rise to modern molecular biology. Based on her notebooks, it's clear that Franklin was on the cusp of making the discovery herself. Despite the critical role she played, she received no recognition for her work. Franklin was determined to become a scientist at the age of 12 and overcame all obstacles to get there. England at the time did not exactly favor women. She was one of just 500 women accepted into the University of Cambridge, the quota set for female admissions to ensure they didn't exceed 10% of the male undergraduate body. She pursued her studies in physical chemistry amid the terror of the London Blitz in World War II. Early in her career, she helped the war effort by investigating how coal changed when subjected to heat using a method called X-ray crystallography. When X-rays are shown onto a crystal, they bounce off or diffract in specific patterns. By studying these patterns, scientists can determine the structure of the crystal. She used the same technique to examine DNA, which isn't a typical crystal, but she managed to treat it like one. With the help of young doctoral student Raymond Gosling, they shown X-rays on a tiny DNA strand, the thickness of a strand of hair for 100 hours at a super close range, 15 millimeters, in order to get a clear picture. Franklin's X-ray images of DNA, especially the iconic photograph 51, displayed a distinctive X-shaped pattern. This pattern hinted at DNA's real shape, which resembled a spiral staircase or twisted ladder. Interpreting the image required Franklin to perform mathematical computations to analyze the pattern in an attempt to reveal its structure. While Franklin was busy doing just that at King's College London, where she worked, Crick and Watson gained access to her X-ray image. How? Franklin's assistant, Gosling, showed the work to the assistant head of the biophysics unit at King's College London, Maurice Wilkins. Wilkins was supposed to be Franklin's supervisor, but the two didn't really get along. Then, in January 1953, James Watson visited King's College London, and Wilkins showed it to his friend and rival without Franklin's knowledge or permission. Wilkins didn't realize the impact the photo would have on Watson, who later recalled, the instant I saw the picture, my mouth fell open and my pulse began to race. During dinner, Wilkins went a step further and gave Watson the necessary dimensions of the DNA sample in photo 51, which was then used to develop the structure of DNA. And then there was more. Watson and Crick later received an internal King's College London research report containing Franklin's unpublished results about her DNA diffraction images. It was given to them by Max Perutz, a Cavendish colleague who got his hands on it during a visit to King's College. As Brenda Maddox writes in her biography about Rosalind Franklin, the MRC report was all Watson and Crick could hope for, as valuable as an enemy's code book. From that report, they determined that the two strands of the DNA helix must run in opposite directions, like two escalators side by side, one going up and one going down. Franklin hadn't yet made this connection, but she was very close to figuring it out. Her notebook reveals she was contemplating whether DNA had a double helical two-chain structure around the time Watson and Crick got their hands on her report. Max Perutz defended handing over the report to his Cambridge colleagues, quote, I was inexperienced and casual in administrative matters, and since the report was not confidential, I saw no reason for withholding it. He later admitted he should have asked for permission from Franklin as a matter of courtesy. Since the report wasn't confidential, it is possible Franklin knew that her research had already made its way to Cambridge. Regardless, the Cambridge scientists did not inform Franklin that they were using her data. Given all that she knew, how could Rosalind Franklin have missed connecting the dots herself? It boiled down to her personality. She was the kind of scientist who believed in thoroughness. She didn't want to jump to conclusions based on one image. DNA exists in different structures, notably the A-form and B-form. While photograph 51 showcased the B-form, 
Franklin was captivated by the intricate details of the A form, believing it held more significant and yet unraveled insights, especially given the richer data it presented to crystallographers. So she temporarily set aside the now iconic Photo 51. It's something like being handed the key to a treasure chest, but choosing to examine it closely to make sure it works before using it. Watson and Crick didn't make that mistake. They knew what they had and quickly brought it to the world's attention. On April 25, 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick published a landmark paper in Nature, proposing the double helix as a long elusive structure of DNA, a discovery that earned them the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine a decade later. In the final paragraph of their paper, they acknowledged that they had been stimulated by a knowledge of the general nature of the unpublished experimental results and ideas of two scientists at King's College London, Wilkins and Franklin. In 1958, Franklin died of ovarian cancer, possibly caused by her repeated exposure to x-rays during her lifetime. She was just 37 years old. Franklin's early death also meant she missed out on the Nobel Prize, which is not given out posthumously. Neither Watson nor Crick mentioned her when they accepted their awards in 1962, though Wilkins, who also received the prize, did. Historians say there's no evidence Franklin felt aggrieved by what happened. However, she may have felt differently had she lived long enough to read an appallingly disrespectful book written by Watson and published in 1968 in which he admitted he and Crick used Franklin's data without her knowledge, writing, Rosie, of course, did not directly give us her data. For that matter, no one at King's realized they were in her hands. Notice how he wrote disparagingly of Franklin, calling her Rosie? And he wasn't alone in his casual diminishment of her. When Franklin prepared to leave King's College for Birkbeck, part of the University of London, Wilkins wrote to Crick, Our dark lady is leaving us next week. Over the years, there has been a growing recognition of the Dark Lady's contributions to the discovery of the structure of DNA, with more people championing her role in one of the most significant scientific discoveries of the 20th century, finally giving her the credit that she didn't get when she was still alive. Franklin's work was heavily rooted in scientific thinking. You can practice thinking with scientific principles, with Brilliant, a website and app where you can learn through physical insight by solving puzzles, and it's free for you to try out. There's something for everyone, whether you'd like to brush up on your skills in math, data science, or computer science. There are no tests, and if you ever get stuck, you can view the explanation to see where you went wrong. Brilliant is part of my daily routine. I like to take a few minutes out of my day to improve my analytical thinking skills by going through their logic puzzles. You can try out Brilliant for free for 30 days by clicking on the custom link in my description, brilliant.org slash newsthink. And the first 200 people who sign up with my custom link will get 20% off their premium subscription, which gives you access to all the offerings. Thanks for watching. For News Think, I'm Cindy Palm.